Nowadays, it seems design has come around to embrace the notion of mixing and matching styles to improve a product or a design. Musical mashups, technological hybrids, and the reinvention of traditional design practices are very much the norm in today's eclectic cultural world. So, at a time when fresh reinvented ideas are replacing the need for new original ones, we take a look at the super graphics movement of the 1960s and how it's been reinvented thanks to technological advancements and the return of our social conscience. Out of bad economies, it would appear, creativity is born. From Madonna's fleeting fashion fads to Governor Schwarzenegger's surprising career change, quality derives from continuous reinvention. Oh, yes, finals. Nowadays, to succeed in life and business in an era where new ideas are the product of clever combinations, crossbreeds, and mashups. It seems the only viable option is to take the traditional, the ordinary and the banal and inject it with a healthy dose of 21st century innovation. So, is reinvention the new standard by which we judge innovation? In a way, Supergraphics is, is, is a sort of perfect example of, of, um, of, of, of reinvention. The term was invented by a, an architectural theorist called C. Ray Smith. And he defines super graphics as graphics applied to a surface of a, a building that distort the building, always have to burst out of the surface they're applied to. So if you paint super graphics on a wall, it has to go on to another wall or it has to go round the corner. Super graphics was a short lived 1960s architectural movement that grew out of the desire of a small group of radical architects to apply paint and graphics to the interior and exterior surfaces of buildings. It was an attempt to remove solidity, gravity, even history, and a technique for inexpensive urban renewal. Quite simply, knocking down walls with paint. In architecture, particularly modernist architecture, paint was taboo, you wouldn't paint it. But these guys came along and they thought, blow that, we're just gonna paint over it. You know, why rebuild when you could remodel with, with paint and graphics? One of the reasons it was formed in the 60s was, was as a social force, and I see that, that coming back. What happened with super graphics was that it, it kind of lost its theoretical position and it just became giant um, lettering on walls and, and stuff like that. But what's happened now is a lot of digital people have come along, architects and designers and artists, they're doing the same thing that, that the 60s guys did with paint, that they're doing it with electronics. Let me rescue you. The digital revolution has, has taken us back to the early days of super graphics, this idea of transformation. All over the world there are, there are Radical buildings going up where electronics, digital technology is, is actually implanted in the building. Obviously there's projection, but I think there's a slightly more interesting level where they're you know, even coating buildings with electronics, doing some really amazing stuff. The idea of super graphics as reinvention is, is, is actually very interesting because that's actually what it was. When it, when it emerged in the 60s, it was an attempt by architects to say, well, we don't have to wait for people to come and commission new buildings. We can actually reinvent spaces just by applying paint and, and, and graphics. So super graphics, in a way, is a kind of arch archetype for reinvention. One of the reasons why super graphics is, is, is um, I think, ideally placed for, for the current climate, both economic and social and, uh, and cultural, is because you know, it's a very easy and quick and cheap way to transform space and, and to make, you know, hideous spaces suddenly look interesting. The, the idea of urban renewal, the idea that you could go to rundown areas and just by painting walls and spaces and buildings, you could transform rundown areas. You, you kind of hope that people like the Olympic Committee are thinking about decorating public spaces in a way that people can identify with rather than just commercial, heavy duty commercial messaging. Well, I think the future for super graphics is, is into the digital realm. It's an interesting trend in, in, in design at the moment, this, the rise of a sort of swap, what the people are calling social design. That's using design to make the world better, not necessarily to make more gizmos and sexy products for us all to buy. It's just so entertaining what you can do now, it's just so transformative. 
The super graphics ethos is founded in the notion of social conscience. While the crude commercial dilution of super graphics has dominated for a number of years, a new wave of technology empowered graphics has now reinvented the movement, promoting social design once again. The graphics for their own sake make, make, they make things look great.